For almost 2,000 years, this has been a place where Christian faith and history meet. Now science is here, confirming what so many believe. The world is reeling from a groundbreaking discovery. Scientists believe they've finally unearthed the tomb of Jesus Christ. This revelation ends centuries of speculation and promises to reshape our understanding of history. But how did they find it, and what secrets lie within? For the first time in centuries, researchers have uncovered what's believed to be Jesus' tomb. Workmen uncovering the marble slab over the tomb. A team made the astonishing claim using cutting-edge technology and extensive research. The tomb's location is shrouded in secrecy, but whispers suggest a significant discovery has been made. Emperor Constantine ordered the church built in the 4th century. The Roman Emperor Hadrian in the 2nd century built a temple here to the goddess Aphrodite to cover the tomb where Jesus was buried. This discovery challenges long-held beliefs, sparking intense debate among scholars, theologians and the public. Could this truly be the final resting place of the revered figure? Join us as we unravel the mystery. Church of the Holy Sepulchre News of a groundbreaking discovery in Jerusalem has set the world alight. Deep within the venerable Church of the Holy Sepulchre, researchers have unveiled what they believe to be the tomb of Jesus Christ. This revelation carries the potential to reshape our understanding of history and ignite a new era of scholarship surrounding one of the world's most influential figures. The story stretches back to the 4th century, to the reign of Constantine the Great, the first Roman emperor to embrace Christianity. Legend tells us that Constantine's devout mother, Helena, embarked on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, determined to locate the lost tomb of Christ. The whispers of history guide us to the year 325, when Helena arrived in the ancient city with her holy mission at heart. As the tale unfolds, Helena finds a Roman temple built upon a site believed to be Golgotha, the hill of Jesus' crucifixion. This temple, dedicated to Venus, was raised on Constantine's orders, revealing a hidden treasure beneath its foundations, a tomb carved into a limestone cave. This discovery sent ripples of awe and reverence throughout the Christian world. The tomb itself was a testament to its history. The upper portion of the natural cave was removed, leaving only a rock-cut burial bed where it's believed Jesus' body was laid. This sacred space then became the heart of the Edicule, an elaborate shrine built to protect and honor the site. For centuries, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre has guarded this revered tomb. Yet, the very stone slab believed to have covered Jesus' resting place remained unexplored until now. When researchers recently lifted the marble slab, they made a thrilling discovery, a layer of mortar dating back to the era of Emperor Constantine. It's a find that supports the historical narratives surrounding the tomb's identification, a tangible link to the emperor whose legacy shaped Christianity's place in the Roman Empire. The discovery carries profound implications it offers the potential for fresh insights into the life and death of Jesus Christ while sparking discussions on faith, history, and archaeology. Of course, debates will undoubtedly rage as scholars and theologians alike examine and interpret the evidence. Was this the actual tomb where Jesus was buried after his crucifixion? For believers, the site has long been imbued with a profound spiritual significance that transcends any need for scientific confirmation. Yet, regardless of one's beliefs, the story of Constantine, Helena, and the discovery of the tomb weaves a compelling narrative. It's a tale of faith, power, and the enduring search for connection to the divine. Whether or not this is definitively the tomb of Jesus Christ, its unveiling is a landmark moment, an emblem of the enduring human fascination with history's greatest mysteries and our unwavering pursuit of the echoes of the past. Within the cave, centuries of faith converge within this space, within a cave of rough-hewn limestone beneath the grand church of the Holy Sepulchre lies a simple shelf 
carved from the rock. It's here, tradition says, that the body of Jesus Christ was laid after his crucifixion, marking a profound turning point in Christian theology. This unassuming burial bed, a stark contrast to ornate tombs of power, speaks volumes about the humility of Christ's earthly life. The tomb's design, with its limestone construction and burial shelves, mirrors the typical architecture of one south century Jerusalem. Wealthy Jewish tombs of the era were similarly carved from limestone caves, often featuring burial shelves and niches. It's evidence that Jesus, though a figure of immense spiritual significance, was also a man of his time and place. The burial bed symbolizes the profound intersection of the physical realm, where Jesus was laid to rest, and the spiritual realm, representing themes of death and resurrection in Christianity. It's a place of both earthly finality and otherworldly potential, embodying the central themes of death and resurrection in Christianity. Gazing upon this stone shelf invites profound contemplation and a tangible connection to the faith's origins. Time itself is layered within this space. The marble cladding that covers the burial bed whispers its own story. While believed to have been installed no later than 1555, hints suggest it may be even older, potentially dating to the mid-1300s. Historical accounts from pilgrims provide glimpses through the centuries, adding depth to our understanding of the site's enduring importance. This transcends mere archaeology. It's a sacred space brimming with spiritual significance and historical importance. Whether you approach it as a believer or a curious observer, the tomb of Jesus invites a confrontation with the profound. It's a place to ponder life and death, history and faith, the human and the divine. Within this simple ancient space lies the heart of a story that continues to captivate and inspire the world. Constantine the Great. The whispers of history grew louder recently as a team of scientists led by Chief Scientific Supervisor Antonia Moropoulou unlocked a long-held secret of Jerusalem's edicule. Their focus, the humble mortar that binds the stones of this sacred shrine. By carefully extracting samples and employing the precise technique of radiocarbon dating, they've revealed a startling truth about the tomb of Jesus. The results sent shockwaves through the world of archaeology and faith. The edicule's lower slab, the very foundation upon which the structure rests, was likely mortared in place during the mid-fourth century. This revelation places its construction squarely in the era of Constantine the Great, the Roman emperor who embraced Christianity and transformed the empire. Suddenly, the edicule isn't just a holy site, it's a tangible link to one of history's most crucial figures. Imagine the scene, architects and laborers, perhaps directed by Constantine himself, working to encase the sacred tomb within a protective structure. This discovery offers a glimpse into those transformative years when Christianity gained its foothold in Rome. The team's work validates the historical accounts that have long attributed the site's construction to Constantine. They've shifted the edicule from the realm of legend into the realm of documented history. Scholars have long debated the true origins of the structure, but now the mortar itself speaks, offering concrete evidence to support age-old stories. This breakthrough is more than just a scientific curiosity. For believers, it adds a layer of historical weight to a space that is already deeply sacred. For archaeologists and historians, it's a thrilling puzzle piece that helps them reconstruct the complex mosaic of both Jerusalem's past and the evolution of early Christianity. The profound implications of this discovery will reverberate through scholarly circles, igniting debates and sparking new avenues of research into one of the world's most revered and enigmatic locations, the technique. Scientists unlock the secrets of the Edicule's mortar using a remarkable technique called optically stimulated luminescence. OSL. This method functions akin to a time machine for quartz sediment within the mortar, 
identifying when those tiny grains were last exposed to sunlight. Optically stimulated luminescence analysis was done in two separate labs to ensure the accuracy of the results, offering a precise window into the monument's construction history. Understanding those results, however, requires understanding the tumultuous history of Jerusalem's Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, believed to house Jesus' tomb, has witnessed centuries of destruction and renewal. Fires, earthquakes, and violence have all battered its walls. In 1009, the church was catastrophically demolished, leaving a devastating question for modern archaeologists. Did the rebuilt structure truly stand on the same sacred ground originally identified by Constantine's delegation in the 4th century? This doubt loomed large as scientists sought to understand the age of the tomb itself. The optically stimulated luminescence technique could date the mortar, but was the mortar laid under Constantine or centuries later during a reconstruction? To untangle the timeline, they examined mortar samples taken from the southern wall of the tomb's cave. These samples, likely less disturbed by the 1009 destruction, offered a clearer timeline, the layers of history. Like rings on a tree, the edicule holds layers of history within its walls. Scientists studying mortar samples found dates etched into the structure's very fabric, 335 AD, a whisper of its Roman origins, and 1570, a mark of its 16th century restoration. These dates confirm centuries of speculation about the construction and evolution of Jesus' tomb. Focusing on the southern wall, a remnant likely undisturbed by centuries of damage and reconstruction, the scientists found strong evidence of that Roman-era construction. This bolsters the belief that the core of the edicule, the burial cave itself, dates back to the time of Constantine the Great. But the most affecting evidence emerged from the tomb's entrance. Mortar samples there revealed a date from the 11th century. This is a powerful confirmation that after the devastation of 1009, the tomb was painstakingly rebuilt, a testament to the unwavering dedication of the faithful to restore this sacred place. These findings don't just tell us when the edicule was built. They offer a glimpse into the hearts of those who built and rebuilt it across generations. Their craftsmanship, combined with precise dating techniques, now allows us to trace the complex evolution of this revered site. The story doesn't end with the scientists, however. Today, the tomb of Jesus welcomes millions of pilgrims from across the globe. It stands under the care of priests from various Christian denominations who still follow strict protocols dating back to the Ottoman era. This place where science and faith intersect remains a symbol of enduring devotion, its stones whispering both history and belief. Talpiat Family Tomb While the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is most widely recognized as the tomb of Jesus, it's not the only contender. One particularly controversial alternative is the Talpiat Family Tomb, located several kilometers south of Jerusalem's Old City. This modest tomb became the focus of intense debate after the 2007 documentary, The Lost Tomb of Jesus. The Talpiot tomb, first discovered in 1980, contained 10 ossuaries, or bone boxes. Several of these boxes bore strikingly familiar names, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. The filmmakers were particularly intrigued by one inscribed Mariamen, a name associated with Mary Magdalene, proposing a radical departure from traditional Christian views that she was married to Jesus. Adding fuel to the speculation were two boxes inscribed with patronyms, Jude, son of Jesus, and Jesus, son of Joseph. Does this imply that Jesus and Mary Magdalene had a child together? Scholars are quick to point out that these were exceptionally common names in one century Jerusalem, making it unlikely that every Jesus or Mary found in an ancient tomb is automatically the biblical figure. The documentary makes much of DNA testing, claiming that mitochondrial DNA shows no maternal link between Jesus and Maria Men's remains. Critics counter that this doesn't rule out other familial relations, such as father-daughter. The film's plot also hinges on scholar James Tabor's belief that the well-known James, brother of Jesus' ossuary, also came from the Talpiot tomb, making it more likely to be the family tomb of Jesus of Nazareth. 
filmmaker Simcha Jacobovici funded chemical testing that he claims links the James ossuary and the Talpiat tomb, based on trace elements suggesting a common origin. However, the small sample size makes this evidence questionable. The Talpiat tomb theory, while captivating, faces significant hurdles. The James ossuary, a crucial piece in the puzzle, has a different appearance than the others from the tomb. Furthermore, several scholars interviewed for the documentary later claimed their words were misrepresented to support the filmmaker's conclusions. Most importantly, if Jesus truly was a humble figure from Galilee, why would his family own an elaborate tomb in Jerusalem? Archaeologist Jody Magnus points out that such tombs were reserved for the wealthy. Additionally, the names in the Talpiot tomb follow Judean naming conventions, not those of Galilee. The Talpiot tomb offers a tantalizing what-if, but the filmmakers and their supporters have yet to present a truly convincing case. Exploring archaeological evidence for the historical Jesus is crucial, especially when considering extraordinary claims like those presented in the lost tomb of Jesus, which necessitate exceptionally strong supporting evidence. The Garden Tomb The Garden Tomb, a peaceful oasis outside Jerusalem's old city, holds appeal for many as another possible burial site of Jesus. Popularized in the late 19th century by Charles Gordon, earning it the name Gordon's Tomb, it draws tourists seeking a tangible connection to Christianity's origins. However, the Garden Tomb's claim to fame rests on shaky ground. Gordon's identification methods were dubious, relying on his belief that the city's topography resembled a skull, with the nearby Skull Hill marking the crucifixion site. Later, Ron Wyatt tarnished the site's credibility with his fraudulent claims of discovering the Ark of the Covenant in the vicinity. Further fueling skepticism, the lack of tombs dating to Jesus' time, the Second Temple period, in the area casts doubt on the Garden Tomb's association with Jesus. Gabriel Barquet, who extensively studied the Garden Tomb, concluded it actually dates back to the Iron Age, around the 7th or 8th century BC. The tomb's architecture corresponds to the First Temple period, predating the time of Jesus. This means, contrary to the Gospel of John's description, the Garden Tomb wasn't a new, unused tomb at the time of Jesus' crucifixion. In fact, it would have already been over 600 years old. While the Garden Tomb offers a serene setting for contemplation, its link to Jesus is, unfortunately, based on speculation and wishful thinking rather than solid archaeological evidence. The Tomb of the Shroud In the Kidron Valley, nestled near the Garden of Gethsemane, lies the Tomb of the Shroud, another contender in the quest to locate the final resting place of Jesus. While its authenticity is debated, this rock-cut tomb, typical of ancient Judea, holds significance for believers as a potential link to the events surrounding the crucifixion. Tradition gives the tomb its name. It's believed an ancient burial shroud was once found within. Some sources even suggest the tomb belonged to Joseph of Arimathea, the figure from the Gospels who offered his tomb for Jesus' burial. This tantalizing link, however, remains shrouded in uncertainty. Archaeological evidence is limited, and scholars hold diverse opinions on its historical relevance. This lack of concrete proof hasn't stopped the Tomb of the Shroud from attracting visitors drawn to its religious resonance and the enduring mystery of its potential connection to Jesus. Its proximity to the Garden of Gethsemane, the site of Jesus' prayers and arrest, gives the location geographic plausibility within the biblical narrative. Even without strong archaeological support, centuries-old oral traditions passed down through generations lend the site an air of historical possibility. The allure of the unknown, the unanswered questions, and the yearning to connect with the life of Jesus are powerful forces, even when evidence is sparse. Dominus Flevit On the slopes of the Mount of Olives, Overlooking Jerusalem's old city stands the Dominus Flevit Church. Its name, Latin for the Lord wept, recalls the tradition that Jesus wept here upon seeing the city's fate. This touching story inspired architect Antonio Baluzzi to design the church in the shape of a teardrop, 
symbolizing Jesus' compassion. Dominus Flevit isn't widely considered the actual burial site of Jesus, but its setting and design offer a moving perspective on Jerusalem's holy sites. Nearby, a rock-cut tomb hints at the area's rich history and some traditions even associated with Joseph of Arimathea, the biblical figure who offered his own tomb to Jesus. While the Church of the Holy Sepulchre holds the strongest claim as Jesus' tomb, Dominus Flevit adds another layer to the sacred landscape of the Mount of Olives. Its unique architecture and the powerful traditions it recalls make it a captivating destination. Though not the definitive burial site, Dominus Flevit still resonates with the story of Jesus. The tombs of Mary and Joseph. In the depths of the Kidron Valley lies the tomb of the Virgin Mary, believed by many to be the final resting place of Jesus' mother. This sacred site holds immense significance within Christian tradition, drawing pilgrims who seek to connect with the revered figure of Mary. While historical evidence is limited, the tomb's enduring appeal lies in centuries of heartfelt devotion and the powerful stories that shape faith. The figure of Joseph of Arimathea, who famously offered his own tomb for Jesus, according to the Gospels, adds another intriguing layer to the search for Jesus' tomb. The exact location of Joseph's tomb remains disputed. Some traditions place it in the Kidron Valley, while others claim different sites. This mystery only heightens the allure for those seeking tangible connections to the biblical narrative. These sites hold power, even without definitive proof, because of deeply rooted traditions that shape faith and cultural memory. The tomb of Mary represents maternal love and devotion, while Joseph's tomb signifies generosity and support in the darkest hour. These figures embody virtues central to Christianity. The act of visiting these sacred sites is a spiritual journey in itself, allowing believers to physically connect with the stories and figures central to their faith. The quest, the search for the true location of Jesus' tomb, is an enduring mystery, captivating historians, archaeologists, and believers alike. Jerusalem's Church of the Holy Sepulchre, venerated as the site of Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, has undergone centuries of change and renovation, making its history as complex as it is sacred. In 2017, a major restoration project began within the church, focused on the Edicule, the small, ornate shrine that houses Jesus' tomb. The Edicule, rebuilt numerous times since the 19th century, had become unstable. Restoration experts worked carefully to strengthen the structure, ensuring this revered site could be preserved for generations to come. The restoration offered more than just a preservation project. As experts carefully worked on the edicule, they stumbled upon a remarkable surprise. This discovery, unexpected and profound, has the potential to reshape our understanding of this profoundly holy place, the discovery. During the 2017 restoration of the edicule, the marble cladding that adorned the tomb of Jesus was carefully removed. Picture the team's astonishment as they uncovered not only the burial bed, but also a hidden chamber sealed within the tomb itself. This forgotten space had been hidden for centuries. Its presence was lost to memory. The discovery sent shockwaves through the archaeological community. The sealed chamber appeared to date back to at least 1555, coinciding with the last renovation of the Edicule. What did those builders intend to hide? Why was this significant enough to conceal, then so completely forgotten? Though the chamber itself held no remains or artifacts, its existence is monumental. It speaks to the evolving history of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, a building that has been destroyed, rebuilt, and reimagined countless times over the centuries. Each era, has left its mark, creating a place where the sacred and the historical are inextricably intertwined. Now, archaeologists and historians are tasked with unraveling a new mystery. What significance lay behind this sealed space? Each theory adds another fascinating layer to an already complex story. Was it created for practical reasons, or did it hold a deeper symbolic meaning? The discovery of the hidden chamber within the tomb of Jesus is a remarkable event. It reminds us that even in places we think we understand, there's always more to find. 
This unexpected revelation has reignited fascination with the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, sparking new research into its past. It's a monument to the enduring power of this extraordinary site, where history, faith, and the ever-present possibility of surprise converge beyond Jerusalem. The search for Jesus' burial place doesn't stop at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. As we already mentioned, in the 1980s, the Talpiot tomb, located just outside Jerusalem, unearthed a tantalizing mystery. This tomb held ten ossuaries, bone boxes, two of which ignited a firestorm of debate. One bore the inscription, Yeshua Bar Yosef, Jesus, son of Joseph, while another read, Mariamen Emara, Mary, known as the Master. Might this be the family tomb of Jesus of Nazareth? The Talpiot tomb hasn't been definitively linked to Jesus, but it remains a fascinating piece of the puzzle. It offers a glimpse into the burial practices of the time and highlights the challenges of interpreting ancient inscriptions. The controversy persists because even a slim chance of a connection to Jesus is enough to spark imagination and research. The ongoing mystery surrounding Jesus' physical resting place fosters a multitude of theories, reflecting the diverse perspectives and interpretations within the search for his tomb. Where do you think Jesus' final resting place is? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos that we made, click on one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.